for this project, I want to draw this right here. Um, we'll put the two pumpkins in first, then we'll draw the posts, put the cross beam across the top. Then I'm going to draw the spider web and put a big old gigantic spider in it, but that's one place you can make a change. You can make changes anywhere you can think. You could decorate your pumpkins, you could decorate around the pumpkins, you could decorate, you know, all over the place. But um, if you don't want the spider, you can do the spider web and not put a spider in it, I guess. But if you don't want the spider or the spider web, you can just put a banner across there and make it say something. Whatever, whatever you want it to say. Uh, so anywhere that you can see that you can make something different, use your own ideas, add other things to the picture, something crawling on the ground, just use your imagination and have fun. Now I'm going to be drawing with a pen, which is never a great idea because you can't make changes. So it's kind of up to me to get it right the first time. Um, we'll, we'll start with this stem. And then I'm going to draw the pumpkin, the shape of the pumpkin, and we'll put some detail on it and hope that it goes well. All right. So that is right here, right there. It doesn't matter if you get it exactly where it is on mine, but get it close. Now, the stems just go out from the top right there. And then uh, maybe, maybe three more lines coming down like that. And just connect them up somehow. Okay, now I'm going to practice with my finger because I've got one chance to get this. Well, maybe have more than one chance because I'm going to barely, barely kind of outline it so I can see it before I draw it. I do that a lot. I'll use light, dotted lines. Not easy with the with a pen but it works well enough then for these parts or the curved parts rather you can just do something like that if you want to if you have a different way to draw a pumpkin and yours works then you will get no complaints from me all right there's pumpkin number one so let's check that out uh, it's close enough pumpkin number two Number two is going to go right over here. I try to keep these, or I want to try to keep these sort of lined up. And I do that a lot with my finger, just sliding across to say, okay, that's kind of straight across from there. I think it's going to work if I put it right here. And then the bottom of the pumpkin, down in there somewhere. They don't have to be the same size. For sure, pumpkins come a lot of different sizes. The last time I went to a pumpkin patch, which was not long ago from the time I'm making this video, uh, I bought pumpkins that weighed a whole lot and pumpkins that were tiny. Alright, so we're going to do this again, do this again, practice. I'm going to dot it in. I don't know if you can see that or not. Eh, doesn't show up in my monitor very well, but on a big screen it might. Okay, here it goes. I'm still kind of sketching. This pumpkin might be a little smaller than the other one, but it's okay. Then some of these detail lines. And it doesn't have to be perfect. If it had to be perfect, we wouldn't be doing it for an art project. Or at least I wouldn't. I don't think I've ever drawn anything perfect before. But you know what? Get it close. Cl close is good enough. Two pumpkin-like shapes. Now we're going to do the posts. And I'm going to leave this little margin at the top. I don't know. You may want to put a black cat crawling, I mean, walking across there. Who knows? Uh, but I'm going to stop them down from the top a little bit. And I'm going to make them wide enough that it gives me a little bit of room to put some shading in here. I might actually do that with the pen, and you could do it with a pencil. Just hatch that in, maybe cross hatch it, and then when you color it, the hatch will show through and kind of give that the shaded effect, more of a 3D, more of a 3D effect. So let's see, let's see what happens. Now, if your pumpkins are not great and you're still fooling with them, stop. 
It's not that important. Um, your pumpkin may have gotten damaged. Somebody might have thrown a rock at it. Don't get carried away with the pumpkin. So let's just get the posts in here. So draw with me now. I think I'm going to just slide up and get the top of the post, which I'm going to put as a curved line. The post is round, and, well, a curved line will work best. All right, but then I'm only going to come down a little bit because i got to put this other post across here, and I don't want to have to... Now, if I was using a pencil, I'd just erase that. I would bring them down, then erase that out so that this post would fit. But I'm using a pen, so I'm going to have to adjust how I do that. I want the other post straight across. It doesn't have to be, but I think it looks good. It's sort of symmetrical and balanced. There we go. And then come down. Now, I'm going to put... Oh, I'm going to have to turn this around. It's more comfortable to draw. I'm going to sketch because then I can kind of aim a line at a target. My target's over here. And every time I make a little piece of the line, it gives me time to think about where it's heading. And I can change course if it's not suiting me. I'm going to go ahead and sketch the end of that round. Come in parallel. I'm not too concerned if this is all nice and straight and level. It doesn't have to be. And you know, since we're making a maybe a rustic post, it really doesn't matter if these sketch lines show up a little loose. That is, you know, not like a just single solitary line. This will work. I'll round that off there. And continue this line down. And while I'm sketching, I might even intentionally make this line have some texture to it, but I'm just going to bring it straight down for now. I'm just saying I could, and it would still be okay. All right. The drawing is really not that difficult to do. Now, the web, uh, the spider web, will take probably as long to do as two or three other things to put together. I'm going to draw the line that comes across and makes the ground. I have other versions of this with other things sitting down here, but, you know, I'm not using those anymore for now. All right, I'm going to bring the line across here for the ground and I'm making sure that it's not really nice and perfectly straight and neat. It could be, but the ground is usually not that perfectly straight and flat and neat. All right, I guess it's time for the spider's web. Yeah, I drew my post a little short. Oh, well. Leaves room for more stuff up there. That black cat is kind of sounding better all the time. All right, let's see what's happening here. And I drew this one. I made this one up, but it's been several years, probably 10 years. So we're just going to crisscross here. That'll work. Okay, I'm just going to crisscross with a big X. Now, if you're not drawing the spider web, you can take off and make a banner in there, or I don't know, you can draw hills with houses on it, or you make it up. It's your picture. All right, let's go this way. One up and down. And in the picture, I've got that one kind of whoops, attached to a rock. Yeah, I'll go back and do that in a minute. I kind of like that. And now through the middle. If these don't run dead centered with each other, it's, it's fine. Okay, now this is just time consuming. I think I'm going to start in the middle and I'm not worried about the spider now. I will draw the spider over top of the web because the spider is very dark. You could put a little red thing right there on the belly or I guess it's on the back, whichever. I'm not sure um, if it matters. If we're looking at the bottom or the top of the spider, that is. Okay, so curvy lines 
And I'm just kind of watching the little, like, it's a little piece of pie, a little triangle. See that? Like a, maybe a piece of pizza with a weird crust. Uh, anyway, I'm watching that spacing so that my lines don't get um, all, well, I want them neat. I like neat. I really like neat. Organized. Now it's hard. It don't have to be organized. Ah, I'm just going to turn the paper around. And I'll kind of lose that here in a minute because after you get several different rungs on this, it, it's going to be hard to maintain that spacing. This is just time consuming. It's kind of like drawing trees. You just have to draw a zillion of those little curvy things. Whoa, that one went crazy on me. Oh, well. It's a spider's web, so... It'll be okay. I don't know if I want to sit there and turn that thing around all day or not. Let's, let's see if I can draw it without turning the paper. Again, these are probably going to get uh, a little bit... Uh, out of balance it they're, we're not going to be able to keep them symmetrical forever I don't think now I've studied spiders webs and I have pictures of spiders webs and when you get to these lower pieces they droop down gravity pulls them down this is art and I'm intentionally deciding to make mine like this it's just a repeating pattern that I think is interesting. So I know what nature is. I have good, good, good pictures of spider webs. When the dew falls and the sun is behind them, it lights them up. And man, they can be gorgeous. And I have lots of pictures of those. So I've studied those and I know that they droop on the bottom. But I'm doing the art thing and drawing them the way I want them to be. Will this ever end? Oh yeah, we're almost at the end right here. Okay, I don't know how many you've got and if you're finished with that or not, but I am. I'm going to put this rock down here. I guess it's rocky enough. There's a little grass. I don't like the bottom of that so well, so hey, let's cover it with grass. Pumpkin too. No, 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 no. I'm going to put hay under the pumpkin. Yep. Uh, it's more like this. I like drawing hay because, well, hay, <laughs> it can go any which way. I like that. There we go. Now there's a little grass. Okay, it'll work. To do the spider or not. Yep, I'm going to do the spider. Oh, uh, yeah, let's get some hatching on. Let's see. Watching the time. Let's get some hatching on these posts. And if your hatch marks have a little bit of a curve in them, that's okay. Now, typically, hatching is, you know, mostly straight lines, but... Uh, in this case, we're we're on a rounded section of the post. I think we're okay to put a little curve into our hatch lines. Hatching is just taking lines and shading in an area. I'm going to do it on this post. And I'm going to do the bottom of that one. Uh, hatching doesn't have to be all neat and organized like I talk about so often. It's really not meant to be that precision, uh, I mean that, that precise. It's just meant to darken an area. So anytime I can mention shading, perspective, 3D, 
I like to work that into the to the projects. We don't get to do a whole lot with that. So anywhere I can throw in a little bit of 3D and talk about shading, then uh, I think that's good. Yeah, there. Hey, it, and it does. It really does. Now, we could do some stuff on the pumpkin, but... Or the pumpkins. Um... That could be very time consuming, and if something goes wrong, we may ruin a perfectly good picture. Now, there, there is an opportunity to put some things over here. Um, you know, you've, you've got these margins on the side, and you could stick something in there. But now for the spider. If you're not going to do the spider, well, you can go on with whatever else you're going to do. Uh, creative thinking or decorate your pumpkins you know you still put the faces on there and if you drew the lines on there and then you put the face well when you shade those in either with black or yellow well if you're going to use yellow you have to erase these lines yellow will not cover up those lines black will all right spotter it is shaped like hmm kind of like an egg and I drew that one. I mean, it's made it up. But I kind of like it, so I'm going to try to copy it pretty much. Now, this won't look very good in, until I get it shaded in. Okay, now the legs. Uh, well, let's, let's see. Let's do, let's do the upper body. So for the head, yeah, I'm just going to do... I don't know, can you see that? Ah, wow. You know, it's kind of all running together there. Let me darken it in so you can see what I'm doing. All right. And then we'll, then we'll put the legs on it. I could grab a Sharpie for the legs. Hang on a minute. And that would make them dark as I draw. Okay. I go out and then just this way. And the thing about the Sharpie is they're not going to be nice and pointed like those, which I like very well. Oh, well. Win sometimes. Lose sometimes. And that was a loser right there because now I can't, I can't change it. And if you're coloring with the crayons, same thing's going to happen. The fat tip on those crayons is not going to let you drew, drew, make this come to a sharp point. All right. Four that go up and back, and four that come down. This is just a graphic design for a spider. I have, believe it or not, taken a lot of pictures of spiders. And I study them. And then I do what so many other artists do. I simplify. So that you get all of the basic shapes that identifies the object. And then you don't need all the detail. And it doesn't need to be precise. Okay, we're running out of time. We're almost, uh, yeah, we're 19 minutes in, and uh, we still have the coloring to do, so let me talk to you about that. When you do the ground, I want you to use more than one shade of whatever color you do. If you're doing green like this, dark green, light green, throw in some brown, a little apricot, the ground is not a single color. Um, I'm going to uh, go back and put in this other little flat rock right here, and I take pictures of those too. I take pictures of lots of things. So um, I was walking around a, a lake in town, and there were lots of these rocks. And I took pictures of them, and I put one in my picture uh, from a photograph that I took. Okay, then the sky, this is a blended sky. You could just use purple. 
If you want to make it simple, just use purple. But this is indigo and red violet. And it just makes, I think, a very, very attractive sky. For the posts, brown. And the hatching might give it enough shading. If not, we can run some black in there. Okay, so that's about all I'm going to say. From the, For the rest of the time, I'm just going to work on the coloring. And uh, the pumpkins, you can just make them... You know, a couple different shades of orange. Decorate them, whatever you want to do. Add some other things. Put bats in the background, a cat, whatever. You can make that up. Okay, so that's it for the audio. And now I'm going to draw a rock and then I'm going to color.